that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger Board Game Babble Show. It's going to get wacky. It's going to get wacky. It might even get a little zany. We're going to talk about board games and the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Woo! We're here. And the crowd goes wild. Hey. <laughs> I'm Berkey, and you're... And I'm Badger. He's better known as Kevin Birkendagger. Birkin Lammer Dagger. And, and you are better known as Barry B -B -B -Dub -Dub Dooby 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 Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Dooby Doo. Oh, yes. How you, you doing, my friend? The, the little sing -along. I'm very well, thank you very much. Yourself? I'm doing fantastic. I am so excited about the show today. You know, it's it's so fun. Uh, you know, we all we are doing is having a little fun, putting on a board game battle show, talking with our friends. We're only separated by a little bit of water, something called the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> but we're going to have some fun. It's going to get wacky. It's going to get wild. It's going to get zany. We've got new segments, so that's going to be big fun. And really what we're going to do is kind of figure out what uh, what each other's been doing lately. So what you been up to, Barry? Well, me, I've been back to work um, because I've been off for a long while with a tennis elbow or tendonitis. Tendonitis. Sorry, tendonitis. Is that when you went? Is that when you went against McEnroe? You cannot be serious, man. The ball was in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember McEnroe. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think and, he had an anger uh, management yeah. problem. No, but he was entertaining as well at the same time. It was funny. Wasn't it funny? I found it funny. Oh, he's big fun. So what you been up to, buddy? Um, oh, whew, It's been quite a hectic week. Um, The last couple of days I had um someone I know here, a board game designer, um, send me um, the rules for the game that he wanted translated into English because he's going to send it off to Haber, the German company that does all the kids' games. Oh, so I, I quickly, Yeah, I quickly knocked that up. It sounds like a nice kind of young children's game. Um, he also t contacted me to tell me that his brother, um, the guy I'm talking about is called Cyril Fay, but his brother oh. Fabian Fay is uh just uh got a game published by z-man games oh called apocalypse something or other it's a new game you don't see anything about it but look out for it it's called apocalypse something or other i can't remember what? why didn't i write it down curse you oh, no. piece of paper oh no <laughs> uh yeah so it's games 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 how about you kevin what have you been up to well, kind of same thing. Been a busy week. I actually got my fishing boat out. I'm an outdoorsman, so I love to go fishing. And I got my, I had to put in a new front deck on it. It was rotted out, and I've got an older boat, but it gets me on the water. And caught a couple fish, and we were doing pretty good. And all of a sudden, I noticed a little oil slick, and sure enough, one of my oil hoses broke. So that kind of cut my fishing trip a little short. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Yeah, I know. There will be another day, however. And we had some other fun stuff that we were doing. We uh, launched our episode of Luchador at BoardGameTheater.com. And that's a fantastic game by Backspindle Games. And uh, it actually just recently won the, uh, the UK Expo Family Game Board Game of the Year last year in 2014. And we did a theatrical... A presentation of it with my son and we're all dressed up in luchador mexican wrestling masks and and if you watch the show if you have time you might find somebody uh use his strength and rip his blouse <laughs> <laughs> yeah and if you watched our last board game babble episode number two you would have seen us watching the trailer for it but you wouldn't have seen it unfortunately <laughs> it didn't go on so, 
No, and we're working on our up. production, you know. That's one thing we're trying to do is improve our production value. And and we will get there as soon as uh, money just falls from the sky for us. So anybody there that is rich and wealthy and you want to help us out, uh, just uh, rain on us, baby. Rain on us. No. Oh, how I oh. wish it could rain down, down on me. Let it rain. Hey, uh, one other thing that was awesome, cool. Maybe we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I did something kind of fun. I got, uh, I love tricking out games. And so I saw the Fantasy Coin LLC was on and, and I backed it. And then I ended up uh, subsequently talking to the owner of the company and he sent me a little sample pack of those Feudal Japan uh, coins. Look at these things. These things are so awesome. I mean, I'm so giddy. I just got so excited about the thing. And anyway, I made a video and uh, it's on the Berkey and Badger page. You can see it or you can see it on our board game theater page, but um, it's just a whole lot of fun. And so that's what I've kind of been up to. Yeah, so been I've been times. watching your videos. Yeah, I've been watching your videos and we, we talked about this in the last episode about these coins and they did look good and um, temptation took over and I, I actually backed a small amount of coins. I don't know which ones I'm going to get yet, but uh, when I, when I see the images, I'll um I'll tick the box and that be it. It kind of set the things. hook on you, didn't we? Oh, you did indeed. You're not you're not going to do anything this week, are you? You're not going to do anything no, to no, me no, this no, week. No, no, no. There's a Kickstarter here, which is about our five thousand dollars, and uh, if you back it, you're going to get this big boat with gold <laughs> in it and a leaky engine. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's uh, I generally don't do very many Kickstarters, so that's kind of fun. Hey, I guess we're about ready to kind of give you a little bit of a rundown of what we're doing on the show, and uh, we've got some fun stuff today. We're going to do the board game news, and this is a segment where our news is kind of things that make you go, hmm, and then we've got our good and the not-so-bad and ugly segment, and then we've got a new segment that we didn't get to last week, but we're going to just try it out. It's an improv fun thing that we're doing unrehearsed, but it's called If They Would Talk. That's going to be a fun thing, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that. And then we have our topical uh, segment, and it's called The Babble. And The Babble, today our topic's going to be about, are there too many games in board gaming? And at that time, we're going to ask you guys to join in with us if you have some questions or if you, you want to join in on the discussion. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to kind of end up with that type of thing. But for now, uh, we're going to just get right on to the board game news. Things that make you go, hmm. The Take following away, film footage is of the prototype version of the game Conan. None of the things you see. Oops, wrong music. Ding, 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 ding. Hello, welcome to the news. <laughs> <laughs> what interesting news uh, we got today. Well, things that have been making me go, mmm, is uh, Fantasy Flight's uh, second edition of uh, Game of Thrones. The, uh, not collectible card game, but the living card game. Yes, that's been making me go, mmm, because I just started buying the first edition and now I've got to start all over again. Curse you! What are they going to do different apart from the cards art? If the game works as it is, why are they changing it? Why are they doing a second edition? <laughs> Have they run out of cards to do for the first edition? So they're going to redo them again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barry, have you had a little extra coffee tonight? <sighs> no, I've been drinking Vulcan blood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I got a gallon of coffee in me, so. <laughs> oh, so tell us Sorry, how you really feel me. about uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, I like the game, um, and it's, it's very hard to get players to play it with me, um, but it, it's just, it does feel like Game of Thrones. The cards are really thematic. They work really well with each other. It's, 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 it's not, it's, the game looks like it's complicated, but it's not. And I don't understand why they're doing a second edition. And a cup uh, I got for my birthday at the beginning of the year the other version of the Game of Thrones, the one which has got the images from the series. And it's like, okay, um, I've already got this. <laughs> it's like so. There's like three editions. 
But yeah, anyway, right. yeah, it's 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 big news. Um, I don't know how it's going to change the game. I haven't really read anything which has made me go, hmm. But it has made me go, hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it in this section. Um, so, yeah, uh, Game of Thrones, second edition with nicer card art. And that's it. Yeah, it's kind of like a remake of Catan almost. It's just like uh, change the name a little bit, add a little bit of different artwork, and and there you got a new offering. Well, I've got something that I want to talk about that makes me go, hmm. Um, basically, what it is is what we're coming up upon is convention season. All kinds of conventions. Com I mean, they just had Geek Way of the West or whatever, and St. Louis was here, and there's been lots of little mini cons but now a lot of the major cons are really starting to pop up and one of the ones coming up fairly quickly is origins uh, trade fair and and origins as uh, it's june 3rd through the 7th this is kind of a medium-sized con that's held in columbus ohio uh, i've never been to origins i would like to go uh, I know some of my friends that are there uh, that really love that con. I guess it's around eight, ten thousand people, so it's it's large, but it's not not you know crazy large. And then coming up in June, June twenty fourth through the twenty eighth is the Dice Tower Con. Yeah, I'm going, and I'm going with my daughter Gabrielle. She played the maiden in our first episode episode of Sheriff of Nottingham but it's for her graduation gift. And so we're going to Florida and uh, we're really pumped about going to Dice Tower Con. We hear so many good things about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, you lucky dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then the granddaddy, the big powwow, the, the grand poobah, if you will, of them all, the mighty Gen Con starts July 30th through August 2nd. Now, Gen Con, I, we've been to two Gen Cons, and this is a, it's an incredible spectacle. Last year, I believe there was 58,000 people that signed up with badges, and there was well over 200,000 turnstile entries into the conference. Uh, super excited about going there. We're going to actually be helping Arcane Wonders of Nottingham, doing some events for them, and also doing some other things. So uh, I'm really excited about Gen Con. Uh, if you've never been to a con before, it might be a little bit overwhelming because it's very large, but uh, it gets a lot of buzz. And then, you know, the grandpa of all of them probably is the big European conference, the the Essen Spiel Fair, and that's October 8th through 12th. And I uh, hear a lot of wonderful things. Someday I would love to be able to go to that. Uh, have you been to that, Barry? I have uh, a couple of years ago, and I should be going this year, fingers crossed, and maybe I'll be working there. So you might find me in one of the ah. booths selling games, well, demoing ah. games, not selling games. That would be awesome. Uh, yes. What? I have to go there and see there sometime, Barry. Sorry, I missed what you said there, Kyle. Oh. <laughs> I said I'd hope to get to see you sometime up at, M at Essen. Yeah, okay. Or I'll maybe see you at Dice Tower Convention one day, which would be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome, too. Well, and then then the the season kind of finishes up with BGG Con, and that's in November, right around Thanksgiving time, down in Dallas, Texas. And last year, I got to go to that. And I guess the reason we're talking about it in the news, this gives you a little bit of the dates of what's happening. But, you know, the thing that makes me go, hmm, is which one do you go to? I mean, it's difficult. We do this part-time. We work full-time jobs, so it's not like you can just go to every con, and it's not cheap. And yet, it's been such a rewarding, uh, fantastic experience to go to these cons, to get to network and connect with people. And uh, BGG Con last year for me was really a fantastic experience. Got to meet so many great people, and a lot of them, maybe even some of them listening today, who knows? Yes. Yes, um, convention season here as well. So um, there's lots of little conventions popping up all over in France. Um, there's one in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, I, oh, why didn't I write all this down? Do you get to the UK Game yeah. Expo? Um, I'll be working. Cause that's, that's in a couple of weeks as well, I think. That's the end of the month. Um, I think so, so I can't yeah. go to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm working, unfortunately, and I can't get away. 
Um, but um, I, I'd love to try it one day, one day. Yeah. But um, well, I think we're about ready to move on to our next segment, and uh, we're going to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Yes, so this is Barry, the part of the show. Go ahead. This is the part of the show where we talk about games that we played, and we either give them uh, an opinion of good, not bad, or ugly. Okay. Ugly. Yeah, basically, when we talk about the good, these are games that we're going to recommend to people. If we're talking about the not so bad, these are games that we kind of half-heartedly will recommend. And yet, there's something going on in the game, whether it's component gameplay or something of that nature that we're not quite satisfied with, but it might not be horrible of a game. But if we give it an ugly rating, if we, if we say, you are ugly, you are ugly, that means we don't like this game. So I've been yeah. playing a couple games uh, with family and with our game group, and we pulled out a game that was pretty interesting. This is an older game that was designed in 2007. And uh, this is a, a game that came out and was published by uh, Days of Wonder. And one of the neat things about this particular game is every year at Christmas time, my family would buy board games. And this is back in the day when Days of Wonder, you'd buy a game and they would give you a coupon code where you could get another one free. You remember that, Barry? Um. How old are you? That was <laughs> sorry. Well, I'm a thousand. Okay, <laughs> I'm like Gandalf. Okay, so, but no, this was uh, yeah. Those days are long gone. But this was back in around 2007, and uh, that was really quite a promotion that they had. And that was back before you know board games were really starting to take off like they are now. But this game is the game Colosseum. You see that? Yes. There you go. Oh, there it is in all of its splendor. Colosseum is a game that you're actually in the Roman times, and what you're doing is you're, you're putting on events. And when you do that, this, what's really cool about this, there's actually an auction where you get assets, and these assets are in the form of gladiators or they're the form of, of little, little things for your set design, the the pillars or the plants and things like this, but you can get lions and horses. And each one of these are several of these categories, like the gladiators can have a hero and they afford you extra points at the end of the game. But what it also has is a very interesting uh, mechanism for roll and move that I've not seen in a lot of games. And the way it is, it gives you a couple options on the dice. If you get the Emperor's Logi, it's L-O-G-E, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but if you get that thing, you get to roll two <laughs> dice. And, and what you're trying to do is get the consoles and trying to get the senators and the tribune to come to your Colosseum because they come with spectators. This, this, the tribune comes with seven spectators, okay? And if you get him in there, you get seven points, basically, and you get seven pieces of gold to to produce the next event. And so you're, you're kind of a set management type of thing where you're doing an auction to get these component, get these assets to put on these big events. And these events are worth money and they're worth uh, victory points at the end of the game. And it lasts five rounds. Now this game, uh, this uh, is no longer in print. I've seen this game actually uh, going for some pretty high coin out there on the internet. So Barry, what do you think uh, my rating of this game is? Ooh, it's a racing game. It's, uh, I've, I've seen Tom loves this game a lot, and um, I don't know. Um, it does seem interesting, and again, you've still got hold of it, and you probably bought it back in 2000 and. 
seven, which is when you've got a coupon, then you've probably still got the coupon in the box, like what I do. And <laughs> you don't have to do with it. Um, so I'm going to say that it's um, not good. Uh, nah, not too bad, sorry. <laughs> not so bad, huh? Well, here we go. You ready? Ah. Oh, no, baby. This game is good. Today's theme, by the way, you'll notice is Indiana Jones and, and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And Indy is our good character today. But actually, oh, you yeah. know, uh, Coliseum, this game has all kinds of legs, man. Uh, Coliseum, uh, in my mind, we play this with the family almost every Christmas. We always have great times. There's always a, a very interesting tension at the end of this game, and that's why I like it so much. I even got some little uh, Roman coins that I've played with the game now, and I don't know. If you get a chance to play Coliseum, I'd highly recommend it. I think it's a fantastic game. So what do you got? What kind of games you've been playing, Barry? Wow, Ooh, this week I played this little baby. Isn't she nice? Oh. Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. No, it's the Resistance. It's a, uh, um, yes, it's futile. No, it's not it. Is it? Resistance. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I am Lucutus of Borg. <laughs> Resistance is futile. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Resistance is um, a, a game where you are a group of resistance fighters fighting against the government. Uh, but unfortunately, the government has put some spies in with you. And you have five missions in which to succeed in taking over the government or the the, the spies, espions, uh, the spies will uh are the sabotage emissions and then they will win and it's a basic sim very very simple game where you have a leader he will choose some players to go on the mission each mission has a different amount of players that you have to send and then uh, uh, there's a vote to between in the whole team of if this is a good selection or not and then what will happen is if it's a good selection they go and do the mission and they're each given a card which means one of them is you've succeeded and one of them is it's a fail they all submit one of these cards all the players that go on the mission submit one of these cards these cards are revealed if all of them are successes then the resistance have succeeded in their mission of setting fire to bins or or burning the president's cat or whatever um if one of them's a fail the spies have sabotaged the mission, which means that the the, the, the saboteurs have uh, sabotaged the, the, the mission. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so the object is there's five missions and the resistance need three to do three missions successfully to win or the spies need to do three missions to uh, right. fail, sabotage. But anyway, what do you think I think of this game, Kevin? Ah, oh, that's interesting. Um, I've played this game several times, and it's uh, it works well in a in a group. You know, especially when you've got five, seven people. I think you could play up to eight players, right? Yeah, it plays up to ten. It's five to ten. Oh, up to ten. We actually have the Avalon uh, edition of it. Oh, the Merlin. Um, yeah. Yeah, I got a feeling you're probably going to say this is not so bad. Oh, what am I doing? I'm clicking the wrong buttons here, Kevin, again. Oh, no. No! It's a first-player marker. <laughs> it Ah! Was... <laughs> we had a riot. There were six of us playing this game. We played it, um, and the Resistance lost, and the Spies won. And we thought, yeah, let's, go and play, let's go and play something else. And then someone said, no, should we try again? And so... We tried it again. We played it again, and the resistance lost. And so we decided we we're going to change. To, no, we didn't change to another game. We played it a third time, and oh. a fourth time. <laughs> this game yeah, was yeah. a hoot. We just had riots of laughter. We were, we were, we were throwing in uh, weird suggestions for missions. So, like the whoever had the the who was the boss, the chief 
of the resistance would make up a mission so you can you improvise you can go oh yeah uh, today we're going to graffiti a um table and chairs at um the white house or something <laughs> stupid like that and um it, it was just hilarious you we were just coming up with really stupid things and you're looking at people and you're going is that spy is that spy and then you're like trying to you're trying to analyze what cards have been played and who's been yeah. selected who and and it's it's a it's not a brain burner but it really gets you really intense in the other players you know you're always looking at them there was one guy who was constantly just looking at the mat in the middle of the table and i was like why are you looking at the mat for obviously i was saying it in french because i was playing with french <laughs> players by then yeah yeah and it was just a laugh and we were just laughing our heads off um great game i couldn't recommend it more would you recommend this game uh it kind of depends i think it's a great game we've had some really great times playing with it but it, to me it's it kind of depends on the group of players if you've got people who like the social interaction and you know like my my daughter she didn't know how to bluff with it really so you know it was kind of like yeah. I, i'm it you know <laughs> And then she figured it out and then it was fine. But, you know, we've had a couple other times too where people just weren't that interactive. And if you don't have a group that doesn't like the social interaction party type of thing, then that can, can kind of throw it off a little. But I've had good games of it and then I've had so-so games. Um, I've played both the, the version that you have and the Avalon. And I kind of like the Avalon a little bit better. If I were rating it, I would probably rate it not so bad. I probably wouldn't say good because it's not the one that I would go grab. Oh, I really want to play this game. Now, my son, totally different. He loves that game. He, If we have a group, a bigger group, that's the one he wants to pull out. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we, we. this is the first time I've, I've had the game for a year, and it's been sat on my shelf. And I turned up to games night, and someone had brought a copy of it. And I, I said, should we try that? Because there's six of us and that's a nice big game for six of us and it was the same six people all the time and we just laughing our heads off and we were just playing the game at its basic level we weren't playing with all the uh powers and special okay. roles and things so it was it's just a fun experience well, the thing that's nice about it i mean it's not a really expensive game you know here it's about 17 dollars us I don't know what it what it costs there, but it's very accessible. It's easy to teach, so you can get it to the table, and it's always different. Yeah, it was me that taught it as well, so I, I had to teach it in a different language. So it was wow. quite easy to teach, which is great. So I, that's why I'm recommending this. Easy to teach, even in a different language. You could just go, no, but you, who toy? I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's for sure so can you talk about another game then Bertie? yeah i could grab up this i've been playing a game and this is what that game looks like it looks like indiana Let's jones see that one how about that one <laughs> ah, it's, ah i recognize that it is splendor is it splendid you may ask it's, this we shall find out well <laughs> splendor's made by space cowboys and uh, this came out and has had a lot of buzz you know it's yeah it's won a lot of uh, awards basically what you're doing is collecting these gems one thing that's kind of cool about the game is that there's actually the gems are put on poker chips and having that little stack of poker chips in front of you to play with is always fun uh, but basically, you're getting these cards. The first person that gets up to 15 points wins the game. Uh, there's level one card, level two, and level three, and they have different gems on them. And the more cards that you get, if you get a get two of the rubies, for instance, and another card that you want to get has a has a two ruby cost, you get that card without having to pay any rubies because you've already developed a little bit of an engine. We actually just played this with the first time with my son-in-law uh, this weekend, and we played two games of it. And uh, for me, uh, the game was uh, very easy for us to get to the table. But what do you think uh, my thoughts on uh, the quality of uh, Splendor are, Barry? 
I think that you think this game rocks because I've played this game and I think it rocks. And I think a lot of people think that this game rocks apart from those guys that run the Spiel des Jahres because they didn't give it an award. Curse them. You're right. Go, Jackpot! Yeah, I think... Find those sound effects. I, I, hear, I hear some people that uh, really diss on, on Splendor. Um, they think it's too simple, uh, that there's not much going on, but I think that's what, in my mind, is the beauty of this game. I like, there's times that that's what I want is a simple game. I don't want to have to sit and brain burn. You know, there's times where it's been a long day and I only have, you know, 40 minutes or something like that. And then also in my mind, this is a very family weight game. So my wife, you know, she likes to play games with us, but she tends to not like the heavier game. She likes Ticket to Ride and she likes some of these games. She loves Coliseum, which is probably a little heavier weight, medium weight, you know. But generally speaking, she's going to want something that we can quickly get to the table, have a good time, and be done. She doesn't want to sit there for three hours. And so I think... <laughs> wants to sit there for three hours. They just want it then. Give it yeah, to me exactly. Box of chocolate and flowers. Give it. I think this would be a great game to get on an iOS app. I think this would... Yeah, I could, I could see that happening. Yeah, but, but you don't have a tablet yeah. yet, right? No, no, I've only just got one of these dudes. Um, so yeah, but you know, as you said, your your one thing that you said about the gems being printed on chips—that's what makes this game fun. Absolutely. It's just sitting there going. Tick -a -tick -tick, tick -a -tick -tick, tick -a -tick -tick. Absolutely. And uh, the way that I think the mechanism, the way you can get that too, is really there's a lot more strategy than I think get, this game gets credit for because you can take one of each, you can get a total of three coins or, or gems, or you can take two from a pile if they're, if they're available, or you can reserve a card. And by reserving that card, you can take it that you know somebody else is going to take that card, but you want it too. So, And even sometimes if you don't want it, you take it and then you get a gold ship. So there's this yeah. little bit of, I mean, play back and forth and just a little bit of take that type of aspect to it because you are you don't want the other guy to go out. Yeah, I, I, I'm... But it, it's a bit more brain burnery for me because I played to win because I played against my wife and uh, it is a head to head. And I'm looking at that first lot of cards and I'm, I'm plotting a route, you know, I'm going, OK, right. Uh, you've got that guy. He needs three reds, three greens, and three whites. Okay, there's quite a few greens on the table. There's three reds. Yeah. Okay, well, and then I'm, I've got my route, and then I'm just like, okay, uh, so what chips do I need to get now? Absolutely. And I do it like that. And it, it, it's, it is really, really um, uh, a, a thinky game, but it's very light thinky game. My daughter plays this. She's eight years old and she plays this yeah. quite well. She, we get the scores are always kind of close. It's sometimes she drops behind and gets about seven points while I'm on 16. My wife's on 12 or something like that. But this game is close. Um, it's very thinky. It's very easy to teach. Uh, again, this is a game that I can teach to my parents who are not yes. rich gamers. Um, and it's just a case of telling my dad, no, no, you can't take two of the same color because there's less than four there. Don't exactly. touch it. Yeah. So, yes, <laughs> great game. I, I yeah. can't recommend this game enough. Yeah, I, I, I like it a lot, too. I think it's good. And and it, it uh, I love the fact that you can teach this game in five minutes. So it's easy to bring. And it's, it's almost, not quite, but almost a filler category because you can play it fairly quickly. Once you're familiar with it, you can whip the thing out in a half an hour, you know. Yeah, and what surprises me, there's no theme. There's no theme on the thing, but I still love playing it. Why? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. So you got another game then you've been playing there, buddy? Yes, this, yes, this, uh, again, this week, this week has been a hectic week for me. I've played a lot. Well, I haven't played a lot, but um, I played for the first time a game. Um, a friend bring a game round and he started to teach it to us in French because I'm in France. Yes, 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 yes. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but uh, when I was looking at my player board, it was in English. And so I was trying to put 
two and nine together to get 17. Um, that game was a roll for the galaxy. Oh. I haven't played race for the galaxy. No, I haven't played race for the galaxy. Um, so this is my first kind of delve into uh, the galaxy itself. Um, it's quite easy to, to learn. Um, it's basically you have a planet and a technology, if I remember correctly, without saying any French words. And then you have a set amount of dice and everyone rolls their dice at the same time. They then have this little control panel and they assign dice uh, to the actions that you want to do. But they can use one of their dice to command an action. And if right. nobody commands an action, then that action doesn't happen. So there's like um, a production phase, there's a planet phase, there's a spaceship phase, there's a uh, research phase. So if nobody activates one of these actions, if you've put four dices underneath that action, then that and you haven't put one on to command it, and no one else has, you've lost those dice and they go back into your pot. And it's kind of resource management. There's there's not many icons. There's what there's five icons and then colors, and you're basically producing resources and and there's military force and then there's science and research force. And it's the first one to get um, 15 tiles in front of them that wins the game. Yeah, I just uh, we actually got this game and I had it setting for a while. I was actually recommended to play this game by Brittany Bow, the GameWire girl. She works for uh, okay. GTS Distributing. And anyway, uh, she so highly recommended. She says, you got to get this game. And it was available at my online uh, producer and uh, or uh, store. And so I actually purchased it. But uh, just this weekend, we played two games of it. And just like mm -hmm. you said, after we got the hang of it, it was pretty good. It was, uh, you know, I'd like to play it some more, and I'd like to play it with more players. We played a two-player game. Okay. I don't know how we many people four. you played with. Four? We played four. So there was like sometimes there were four out of the five actions that were being uh, commanded, and sometimes there was only like three out of the five actions being commanded. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we played with five players. Sorry. We played five. Well, I got to think that you think this is a good game. Ah, oh, dearie me, dearie me. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No, oh, no it's, ugly. It's not, it's not that at all. It's actually not a bad game. Um, oh. <laughs> I just wanted to show off the ugly picture. That was all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was yeah, going to come I all mean, unglued on you. <laughs> come on. I was going to come. I was going to go ape on ugly on you, buddy. You know, it's like a, you, you, uh, we. You're off the show. I ain't doing this no more. If you're going to do that to roll for the gap, I'm going to reap my blouse. No, um, it was all right. Um, it was my first play, and as I said, I was a bit confused with some of the rules at the beginning of the game, but halfway through the game, started to understand how it worked, and my wife started to understand how it worked, and she does this winning thing. She always wins her first game, even though she doesn't know what she's doing. And so, uh, <laughs> so I think that kind this of... This I know my... about. This I know about. <laughs> you have the same problem. <laughs> yeah, so yeah I... it, it wasn't bad have you played uh, race for the galaxy the original card game then no i haven't no we i purchased it a few years ago and i just had a hard time with it um i'm getting old i guess and i can't figure things out but um <laughs> my son taught me it and but i was having a hard time with those the iconography of the cards and getting it straight and i just got kind of burnt out with it to be honest i we played a couple times but um just wasn't interested. And then the subsequent uh, uh, expansions came out that weren't highly touted. At least the last one wasn't. And, and But then I heard about this one, that it was easier to learn. Uh, it's a little bit quicker, all of those kind of things. And, you know, the first game, Barry, I was just like you. I was feeling a little bit out of my element. I was feeling like I couldn't really, uh, really get on 
on track. I was trying to figure out, okay, what's the strategy? I mean, what, what do I have to combo here? And my son is so smart and sharp. I mean, the kid just boom, 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 boom. And he's building and he's getting seven, eight dice every time, you know, and I'm like, I got my piddly little three because I can't get any money on the track and you know, that crap. But anyway, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then I said, okay, let's do it again. And the second game, all of a sudden it goes, oh, that makes sense. Started to learn the tiles a little bit and go, okay, I need to combo that, combo that. And all of a sudden it's making sense. And now I'm thinking, no, I kind of like this because it's, you know, I can play this. We played a couple games in 30 minutes. It wasn't that hard. Mm. And if, if we can get three and four players now, I think that's going to, then there's more options for your actions. You know, when you have two players, you roll a die to, to try to get one. So, but if you both pick the same action and you roll a die and happen to roll the same one, everybody only has one action. Well, that's mm, no fun. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I don't know if I'd recommend it as a two player. Maybe other people could talk better about that one, but yeah, it, well, it's pretty good as a five player game because everyone does everything at the same time. Um, and then you just go, right. Anyone did the explore action. Did anyone build the planet? Did anyone build any? And it's all done at the same time, and everyone's like, "Okay, yeah, I did that. Oh, I got those. Oh, yeah." So yeah, great game. Uh, it's so you good, didn't, but you didn't feel like it slowed it down with the five players. It was very slow at the beginning because we didn't understand what we were doing, but as everyone got into it and as the game got halfway through, everyone picked it up and understood that if they sent a blue rocket to a blue planet, they get an extra point and things like that. So right. uh, no, the, the more, more players is it, simultaneously. It's simultaneous. It does expand the game a bit, but it, it's pretty much simultaneous. Yeah. Well, that's what my son said. He said, no, you don't want to play this game with cheaters. <laughs> no, no. That's what I hate about real time games. Maybe that's a subject for another time. Real time games. It's yeah. Just, I'm always worried that there's someone at the table cheating. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been playing another game that uh, we ended up kind of playing by accident. I heard it was good, but we needed a filler type of game. And this is a game that came out by Eagle Griffin Games. And it's been around a little while. I think they recently did a, a reprint of it. But being today we have the theme of, of – Indiana Jones and uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. We've kind of got this uh, archaeological, you know, type of thing going on. We played a game called Ink and Gold. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Ink and Gold. Now, have you played this game, Barry? Um, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's over there. Yes. Eight players. <laughs> well, we played it. Uh, we we've initially played it, learned it with a five-player uh, contingent and then we've played it with more since and i think what you mentioned when you played resistance you said oh let's play it again and then you played it a third time and that's what this game is i mean you've got five little little excursions into the temple and you've got these two little voting cards you've got the torch that you're going into the temple to find the stuff and then you're you've got the torch that tells you card that votes to go out of the temple and what's cool is there's some artifacts you can get, and they're worth five five gold or whatever it is. And then there's there's these danger cards. There's like three of each, like three of the spiders or three of the wall falling down or three of the little goober guy that, that's there or three of the snakes. <laughs> yeah, he looks like the little mug rub, doesn't he? <laughs> we call him a witch. Yeah, he's kind of creepy. I'm a goober guy. <laughs> but anyway, they uh, uh, if two of those come out, then you your the excursion is ended. But you always have the opportunity to get out, and you can get there's other cards that have gems on it, and it's divided by the group, all of that type of thing. So really, I'm not giving a great overview here, but basically, it plays really <laughs> quick. <laughs> it's super fun. Um, the minute we got done with that game, it was we were ready to go. Let's do it again. So, what do you think? I think about it. I think you think it's um, it's going to be in the middle. Oh, I'm going to say, oh, but well, you've obviously played it again, so I'm going to say it's good. I'm going to say you think it's good. Yeah, I kind of let that one out of the bag. <laughs> Get back in the bag. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you know, I don't know. If you're like me, Barry, there's not very many games that I would rate ugly. There's there's several of them that I would probably put in this not so good category, but you know, before I purchase a game, I tend to watch two or three reviewers like yourself. And I'll watch yeah. you play the game and and review it and show the components. And so I I usually don't just get a game because people are talking about it. I get it after I've reviewed it. And I'll know pretty much whether I like it by watching the review. Um, sometimes it happens where everybody's buzzing and excited about it, and I go, nah, I didn't care for it. But generally speaking, oh, that's my kind of game. I like that. And that's when I mm-hmm. purchase them. So we're so much more informed now than we were years ago where you just bought it off the shelf. Oh, you are distinguished. Yeah, I'm like you. I have a beard. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you <coughs> entirely, he says, coughing on the air that was stuck in my mouth. Um, yeah, this game is just, it is fun. I've had some bad experiences with it. There's people that just don't understand it because it is basically a push your luck and it's it's like a toss of a coin. You go, should I continue and hope that it's heads or should I leave and take the money that I've got already? Um, and it's basically that. But the thing is, it's simultaneous. And that's where the fun is. And that's where the risk is, is because everybody's doing it at the same time. Everyone's going one step up on the ladder. There's money. They share it out. And then they think, should, should we go to the next step together? And some people drop out and collect money, which has been dropped. And some people just save their money exactly. that they've got. And it's just that that push your luck element. And when we play it, uh, we we do a play a three player variant because it's my wife, my daughter, and my, myself. We love this game. It's just fun. We're we gonna go in. Are well, we gonna continue? Turn the card over. Yeah, exactly. And those tokens too. You know those those artifact cards. In order to really take advantage of that, you have to be the only one that leaves the temple with that artifact card to get the five. If two people go out at the same time because they think they're going to get it, then they don't get it. It stays. Um, yeah. Yes. So that's a push your luck type of element too, but it's like a push your luck to leave first, but then you may forego getting additional uh, you know, gold and stuff and uh, for the subsequent parts. And it's like people will, will exit early and there'll be one or two people left, and they're just watching the 17 card throw and 17 coins they're getting, you know, and it's crazy. How many times has that happened to you then? <laughs> it has happened a few times. You know what we did, Barry? And we, we want to mention something for our uh, listeners. This is kind of neat. But when we play Ink and Gold, we take out our Stonemeyer treasure chest. And this is our Stonemeyer treasure chest. And Stonemeyer treasure chest, they've got these really cool gold. Can you see those? And these things just, they're fantastic. And they've got ore. They've got these gems that are in there. Pretty cool. Wood and brick. Those kind of things. And we actually pull these out instead of using the little tokens that come with the game. And anyway, it's just a lot of fun. And I use uh, Stonemeyer games for a lot of our things. But last episode, we talked to Jamie, and he's doing this just for the listeners of the Berkey and Badger show. If you go to Stonemeyer Games and you go to their website, uh, we have got a coupon code for you. And the coupon code is really simple. It's just Berkey Badger, B-U-R-K-Y Badger, B-A-D-G-E-R. Berkey Badger, and you'll get $10 off a purchase of a treasure chest from Stonemeyer Games on their website. It's only good till the end of May, but I talked to Jamie, and he was just really gracious to just to offer that. Uh, we're not being paid for this or anything. He just wanted to help us out with the show, and um, Jamie just, they do such fantastic work. They've got the game Euphoria and Viticulture with the Tuscany expansion and some other really cool ones. They just finished a successful Kickstarter, but I love these treasure chests. And if you haven't seen these before, these just make it so much more fun to play with the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you can see is the Stonemaier Games uh, website, and there's the treasure chest. It comes with six different resources, and they do look lovely and scrummy and munches. Uh, they they're do fantastic. Look like <laughs> and they're heavy. 
they're heavy. I mean, you're, when you grab that ore, it's the real deal. Uh, it's it's, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, so send some love over to Stonemeyer Games. It was fantastic of Jamie to do that. Thank you, Jamie, for uh, helping us out with that and helping our listeners out with that. Yes, Jamie, thank you very much for making viticulture for me because <laughs> I feel, <laughs> as you can see, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that's where oh. I work. And um, I, uh, the game is is just, I just love the game. Um, I need to, I need to crack it out again and do like the third tier. We're up to the third tier, but we haven't played a third tier yet. So Ooh. I don't have that game or the or the Tuscany expansion, obviously. But I guess that was rated as one of the best expansions of the year on the Dice Tower Awards. And yes, it, it was. But what was it? I believe it was for for one of the nominees for one of the best. Uh, uh, expansions for the year yeah yeah it's and uh, i love it's not i love the way jamie <laughs> okay i love the way jamie handles himself too he just uh he really does business right and he really cares about the customer you can tell that and i've been super happy with what i've seen from him anyway but well i tell you we're gonna move on and we're gonna go to our next segment this is kind of interesting we're gonna just shoot from the hip on this one guys so we're going to talk to a, sh a segment that's called If They Could Talk. If They Could Talk. Wrong one. <laughs> now, they, if, <laughs> see, that's a monkey with a keyboard over there. <laughs> so what we're going to do, this is kind of a little bit of a takeoff of the who's your line anyway type of thing. And we've started with a segment, and we have a situation we have two characters. The situation is these two characters are sitting at a train station. And we're going to end this up with an ending line. And the ending line is going to be, and that's why I brush my teeth. So the situation is we're sitting at a train station. The ending line is, and that is why I brush my teeth. And the two characters are going to be yours truly. And I am going to be doing... It as the Sheriff of Nottingham. And my counterpart and is going to be... I'm going to be Kong. <laughs> so you may start go. there, King Kong. Oh, 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 left a bit. I'm trying to get this camera. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, sir. Do you know what time the 8.15 from uh, Wensleydale is? I don't know anything about the time. I am here to spy out the vile merchants who are trying to smuggle contraband into the kingdom. Do you think that they're probably smuggling it in a train by any chance? I think that the train may be full of compartments what compartment have you been traveling in, sir? Well, um, I'm a bit too big for a, a compartment. I normally eat the engine, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the engine eater is what they call you. I have no use for you, you oaf. Uh, why? Why do you not have any use for me? I'm just waiting for the 815 from Wensleydale. That's all. What is this Wensleydale? And why do you want to go there? Wensleydale is the third stop after the Nottinghamshire uh, Community Club, which normally leaves at 5.52 on a Wednesday afternoon. And it normally carries about five cars, which are not very nice. And they kind of like jam up my teeth. But uh, on a Wednesday and a Sunday, alternatively, they make up a, uh, a round table every hour, which is really interesting. Oh, I love the round table, full of juicy components like veal and chicken. I love chicken. Chicken? Chicken? Which card is the chicken in? I hate chicken. I hate it when the feathers get stuck in my teeth. And that is why I have to brush my teeth. Oh, that is why I brush my teeth too. 
<laughs> okay. Well, there you have it. <laughs> if they could talk, that's what they would talk about. The Sheriff of Nottingham and Kong would talk about the 8.15 from somewhere to eat chickens. <laughs> and, and engines that are stuck in his teeth. That was that was pretty good. <laughs> it just I don't know where it came from. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll do another one next time. Um, if you've got any suggestions for um, maybe a situation or and an end line, um, leave them in the comment box in the video, and um, we'll, we'll pick some and and uh, use them, and and then we'll go through our game collections and find some really obscure art and make the box talk yeah that'd be great <laughs> what would they think well i tell you we're going to go on to our new segment called the babble and the babble this is our topical segment where we talk about things related to board gaming and today we'd like to invite you yeah there's the two monkeys i don't know which one is me and which one is you there barry i'm the one with the hat oh <sighs> You get yes. the hat. Why do you get the hat? Because I got the spy glass as well. <laughs> oh, the spy yeah, glass. Uh, oh, oh, yes. <laughs> That's well, me. Well, the Bible, we're going to talk about topics and board games, and we'd like to invite you. Uh, if you uh, are watching live, you can uh, join in on the question and answer. But you can also follow us on Twitter. You can find me at Kimpeck, K. I am P E K Kim Peck at Twitter and Barry, if you want to yours is the T balance O power T balance yeah, O power. There it and is. we'll be happy to uh, let you join in on the conversation. But today's topic that we're going to talk about is are there too many games? How do you feel about that? Barry? Um, Oh, I keep putting the wrong pin number. What do I think about it? Are there too many games? Well, yes. And there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye. Adios, amigos. That's a wrap. Yes, I think there's too many games. There you go. And what do you think, Kevin? Is there too many games? Oh, gosh. You know, it's. I think there's so many games that it, it almost has gotten to the place for me where it's a little bit daunting, a little bit overwhelming. You know, you go to Essen and... Uh, or you go to Gen Con and some of these big conferences like this, and all the game manufacturers are there, and people are, you know, just running, almost trampling you down. I mean, you should see these guys with the cameras, and and people are just rushing into the convention hall to to look at the new offerings that everyone is waiting for, and uh, it's it's like a madhouse. I mean, how, do you know how many board games were actually published last year, Barry? Uh, you've, have you got a number? I don't have an accurate number. Um, I've heard some things, and I haven't really researched it. But from my understanding, there was over 960-some new board games just last year. Why couldn't you let me guess? I thought you had a number, and I was going to go, okay, now let me have a guess then. Uh, 959. Yes? I'm a little slow. I need more coffee. <laughs> I need more Vulcan juice. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a pot load of games, man. And mm. I don't know if you, you take this concept of the cult of the new. Uh, you know, everybody wants to grab onto the new greatest thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it astounds me. I'm cult of the old, although I do buy occasionally a, a new game time from time to time after time. If you step and you look and you will find me. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've, I've, I'm guilty of the cult of the new thing because I've, I've, you know, I've really had a resurgence in board gaming in the last three years. You know, we've been gamers since I was in high school. Have all the original Texas and Allies and Shogun and Conquest of the Empire, Fortress of America, all that stuff, and we played those games and. We would buy games every Christmas, but I really started having a little bit of a acquisition disorder. 
<laughs> and these games are so fun and and they're getting they're so fantastically designed now the components are going up a notch i mean everything is it, it's it's super fun and it's like but when is enough you know how do we how do you get through all of these games it's like i only have so many t minutes to play games each week you know and how and, and then you got to learn the new rules and and then if you're the one that has to teach the game or i mean it's <laughs> i find that very daunting now what teaching games or uh, the just of games that are coming out no more the more the fact that there's so many i mean I'm having a hard time remembering the rule set sometimes from games because I haven't played them recently. And it's like, oh, yeah, how does that go? It's like you've kind of, you know, maybe it's my age. I don't know. but <laughs> Yeah, but can, can, can I ask you this thing, Kev? If, yeah. um, if there are, you think there's a lot of games coming out, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well... I don't think it's a bad thing. I guess I, 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 I love this hobby. I love innovation. I love that there are new themes that are coming out, the creativity. Um, I love art. You know, I paint wildlife myself and I, I see, you know, the art that's coming out in these new games. And, and I just think it's fantastic. And sometimes the storylines are, are amazing. And there's all kinds of new mechanisms. So I think that's good for the hobby the downside that i that i that i think is there is that we're not enjoying some of the stuff that was our grail games that we just love to play all the time because we can't get to them mm -hmm. that's exactly right it's it, you, you buy a game uh in it, when we were young you bought a game and you would play it probably once every week and you didn't have to teach the rules you just break it open and play it and that is very yeah. rare nowadays. You'll maybe Splendor, you'll just crack it open and you go, come on, I'm going to beat you this time. And you just you just play it. You don't have to explain the rules. You just go straight into it with your strategy and you go, bang, fun. Absolutely. We did that with just recently with Stone Age. You know, we played it and I played with you on the board game arena just to learn the game and started to kind of get it. And then uh, we played it one night and then we played it uh, – uh, with our game group with my daughter and her husband and my other daughter. And the following week, we played it again. And that not having to explain the rules and not having that, that I don't know what you call it, that, that slight tension or apprehension, oh, am I playing this right? Do I, I don't even know how to play this feeling. And uh, so you play it and you enjoy it because it's new, but at the same point, you don't feel like you know what you're doing and getting on top of it. And once you've played it a couple of times, all of a sudden you can start to, oh, that'd be, I'm going to do that strategy or no, I'm going to do that. And then you can actually determine whether you actually like the game or not. But when you only get it to the table a couple of times, you really can't develop anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it is, it is annoying you, you you learn a game and then you move on to the next one you learn a game you move on to the next one and as you said it makes it hard to remember rules and again i like to play a game and i like to play it several times um uh, and try out different strategies and sometimes not play with a strategy at all and just go <laughs> and <Yeah>. um <laughs> and have fun well, uh, but we played we were you, playing you coliseum yeah, no, exactly, because you're just too intense thinking about the rules. And we hadn't played Coliseum maybe in a year, and that's the game that we talked about earlier. And um, there was something sticking in my head about a rule of that game. But when we actually read it in the rule book, there was just a little bit of ambiguity in, in the wording. There was an or between the two conditions on whether you could get keep the, the heroes. And I knew there was something that was important to end game scoring, but for some reason I just couldn't quite tap into it. And then when we read the rules, it was like, oh yeah, now, now I understand the conditions because we researched it. But we had to sit there and talk about it for longer than we wanted to. And <laughs> yeah, you know, and, you sit and, and I'm not that much for, you know, rules lawyering anyway. I don't like that stuff. But mm -hmm. 
we're, we're trying to play it right at the same time. But if we would have been playing that game more regularly, we wouldn't have had those kind of thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think, what do you think me, about with go ahead if you'd yeah, ask me do i do i think it's a good thing or a bad thing for the the hobby i would say okay i'll ask bad. you uh do you think do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing right you know what i think i think that having uh so many games come out over the years over and over again is um what would they say if they would say that it was something kind of like um ugly. i think it's a bad thing kevin i think oh. it's a terrible thing that i think that it dilutes the market there is i've seen games come out and they are just this game but slightly different there's one or two rules different but different art and it's like okay you know it's it's like the 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 diamonds the clubs and the hearts and the and the other they're all basically the same game but they all have these little unique twists and when you play a game you just want to play a game which is unique and thematic to, to the things that you like um uh i don't want to own 50 different miniature games because they all do slightly one thing different. You're all basically moving on squares, or you're attacking with dice, or uh, ah, something like that. Can 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 we say love letter? <laughs> Batman yeah, love letter. Could, Hobbit yeah, but love that, that's, letter. That, that's not exactly what I'm trying to get at. Um, right. For example, uh, Hero Quest. Yes, Hero Quest is a roll and move dungeon crawl jobby there's the okay. dungeons and dragons board game which is a roll and move dungeon crawl jobby it, there's not much difference between the two apart from a combat system and uh traps and things and the story obviously and then there's you've got descent which is a little bit more interesting uh, but it's still not the same but there's look there's quite a few games that are coming out on kickstarter which are grid based dungeon calls with minis they just got different minis but they just got slightly different and it, and I some of them are, are very much the similar to another game and it's like stop stop i don't want to have to buy that game because that game is almost the same as this game you know, it's like like buying pink fairy washing up liquid and green fairy up washing up liquid and they're both the same thing but there's just different colors and that's how i feel i feel swamped in that sense and and where else was i going i babbled i babbled sorry um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um so when you when you're saying that you kind of feel that there's kind of almost stamped on themes and too much similarity do you feel like the market where you're at is is saturated to the place where people are are not buying as many games because of it or they're buying games that maybe they didn't want to want to buy that's my fear people are going to buy a game thinking it's this and it's actually crud comparison to another yeah. game for example i'm trying to think of something a good example you know you buy a game let's say that you buy space cadets and this is probably a very bad example you buy space this, uh, a friend of yours buys space cadets but space cadets dice duel is better than space cadets and they buy space cadets and it's like oh god this is a good game i like this and you go no no you don't want that game you want this game and then they're like mm -hmm. oh i've just wasted all my money on that and you know you, if there's too many games out there and a lot of them are under par and people keep buying the under par ones they're going to be put off of the hobby they're not gonna they're not gonna see the the good games and the good games are there but everyone not everyone talks about them anymore the good games like carcassonne Catan, uh ticket to ride they're there and they are gems because they do something which was not done at the time and they still do something which is still not being done at the time and that's great unique is uniqueness but there's so much saturation there's this game than that game but they they're only slightly smidgen different or one's got really nice card art or one's got 
fabulous miniatures and that frustrates me it's just uh, i've played tested games and i find that it's like okay this game is like that game but it's got mm -hmm. these kind of characters and it's like well i see that in sometimes with thematic games there's some games that 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 there's a theme that i prefer over another theme, an example that I would have of that is from Queen Games. They've got the classic Wallenstein, but then they also have the Shogun, and yeah. that has the cube. Yeah, that's a good example. Well, yeah, they're the they're the same game, um, but I like personally I like that German uh, feel of it. And I have German heritage, so you know there's just something about that game that I like. I like the map. Uh, I like the fact that there's coins in it instead of the treasure chests that come with with Shogun. Now I like the Japanese theme too, so I really like that game. But they're the same game, so I hear what you're saying. For me personally, it doesn't bug me at all because before I purchase a game, I generally research it. So if it's just the same old, same old, I I usually will catch on to that. I've I've had a little bit of a problem with that with some worker placement games. They just like, well, this is the exact same thing with just a slapped on theme. Um, and then it's kind of like I don't I if I'm gonna play that kind of game, I'm gonna play this one. I don't need three of that kind of game. And I think that's kind of what you're saying too. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm saying. And again, you know, if, if there are going to be people out there that are not going to research and they're just going to go, oh, I'll buy that because it's zombies. And they take yeah. it home and it gives them a bad experience. And they think, OK, uh, well, that wasn't what I was expecting. Um, I'm going to stop buying games now. They, they're going to arrive at a point where they're going to stop buying games because they've got too many zombie games or they've got too many uh, this type of game or that type of game. I'll, I've got too many Game of Thrones uh, living card games. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment so um. well what about what about people do you think it's causing people you know there's only so much income that you have to discretionary spend on board games i mean you usually have to keep it under fifty thousand dollars a year right <laughs> <laughs> i married the wrong woman <laughs> 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 so, but I mean, seriously, how do you, how do you buy them all? And these aren't cheap games, you know, especially the good ones, you know, you're going to spend 30, 40, 50, $60 and it's hard. That's why I research before I, I purchase games because I don't want to have that bad experience where I get a game that, oh, this is the same old thing or this wasn't that great. Mm. But mm. How about the market itself? You know, they talk about now being the this renaissance, if you will, of board gaming and this resurgence in, in the industry. And a while back, Chaz Monitor had a, a episode on his uh, Paradise Paradise show, and he talked about, you know, have we re reached that saturation, kind of like the comic book industry? You know, are we ready yeah. to implode, or are there new people coming into the hobby that is taking care of that issue yeah the new people coming into the hobby are going to be overwhelmed and they're just going to be swamped and they won't know where to go um new people are going to come in and watch tom vassal and say this game's good this game is not good they're going to go out and buy those good games and then maybe be disappointed because they it didn't do what it, they thought it did and some there will be games that they you know they would love and cherish i mean i could admit to to this as well there was a time when uh, i watched tom and i was like okay that's a good game okay i'll go and buy it oh that's a good game i'll go and buy it and most of the times they were gems and but some of them didn't fit comfortably with me and the theme was wrong or the mechanics didn't make me think that this was yep. a good game yep. and you know, for new people coming into it, it's going to be hard work for them. Um, and Absolutely. I feel sorry for them, basically, because th this is too much saturation. Well, Tom, this is the reason that I've had to up my budget from $30,000 a year to 50000 So <laughs> <laughs> that guy can sell board games. I'm telling you, if he likes a board game, he's going to go, wow. I love this game. You got to get this game. This game is in my top 100. And when he says that, you go, mm. I got to get that game. I don't even like that kind of game, but I got to get it. 
Yeah, yeah. I sometimes get that as well. I'm like, oh, come on, grow up. You've only got this amount of money. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm being pretty facetious too. I have to be very careful with my budget. So, but it's a uh, it's one of those situations. I think that the market the the market itself, I think, will regulate itself a little bit too. You know, if these companies aren't producing quality games. They're not going to stick around. So I think there's going to be some attrition there. And yeah, be yeah, fortunate yeah. with Kickstarter that there are games that are less par than maybe maybe other games. That's kind of a whole other topic. But Yeah, I, this, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, it seems like every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going, oh, I can design a board game because they're popular. And then they're just knocking out a game which is – Ticket to Ride clone, but with a different theme or, you know. Ugh. And, yeah, it, it's good that all these different versions might, will one day progress to something greater and something which you go, bang, oh, yeah, that mechanic from that game and this mechanic from this game and this art style, they make this fantastic game. But it's yeah. just, you know, it's, it's, it's lots of sand on the beach. Well, you know, last year at Gen Con, uh, there was a, a designer panel. And actually, in that designer panel, there was different questions. And one said, do you ever, you know, copy or work off of other people's thoughts or designs? And all of the designers, and these were top name designers, were saying, absolutely, you're stupid if you don't. You mm -hmm. take a design, and then you try to innovate it. And it's kind of like, you know, the old, you had the old thrashing machine to, you know, uh, harvest your wheat, and then it evolved into a, a combine. It got better and better and better, and it's kind of the same situation with gaming mechanics. They're they're adding little twists to them, but it's still the initial mechanic, but it, they're adding something trying to be innovative, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I just feel that the, the, a lot of people are fishing around. They got, they got. Oh, let's do this theme, but with a Dominion style deck building game. Oh, let's do that theme with a, a Dominion style deck building game. And it's like, well, that's, come on, that's, that's a great, good. That, that's a great, great example. How about you know Dominion versus Trains? Yeah, the, the, mm, I haven't played Trains, but. Um, I can see that there's a progression because it's this same mechanic of deck building, but you're actually physically doing something on a board as well, if I'm correct. correct. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. But, you know, when you, for me anyway, when I played it, it's, I don't really need both of those. I like trains fine, but I like Dominion. But they're kind of the same thing. So some people prefer just straight old Dominion. Some people prefer trains, but I could... I could go with either one, but I really don't need both of them. So I, I hear what you're saying on that level. Yeah. And again, I get people sending me um, saying, they, I've got a game. Um, it was going to be Kickstarter soon. And, it's, and you, it's, some of them are nice. Some of them are good. Some of them are unique. But sometimes you get a game and it's like, okay, this is munchkin with different art. This is... Uh, this is um, Monopoly with um, a different theme. And it's like, oh, come on, do something different. We shouldn't be having them with these games. We should be just having... Uh, it was like when we were young, we would talk about the good programs on telly. We would talk about the A-Team and Knight Rider. There was nothing else interesting on the telly. It was A-Team and Knight Rider. Now the kids, they've got all these other programs to talk about there's just too much to talk about and so there's no real um kind of uh you know you've got one friend who likes that program but you've got this friend over here that likes the other program and then you've got that friend over there who likes that program and but you don't like that program and and so there's not like this big congealing together as gamers you know uh, this person likes resistance this person likes firefly that person likes galaxy truckers and it's like well why can't we just all like ticket to ride and play that together you know another another thought kind of related is and i don't know how how this works for you with gaming groups but you know with our libraries expanding because of 
all the games that are out there and that we acquire over time. I have about 300 games in, in my library, in my collection, and I actually need to kind of call some of my, my games out, I think, because one of the problems we have is making decision on what game we're going to play. You have a diverse <laughs> audience now. Some people like more Euro. Some people like more thematic or mirror thrash, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some people are, you know, would like a worker placement game. Other people want a party game. And 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 you look at your collection, and and there's so many of them. Almost every week, we look at at our collection and go, so what should we do next week? How can we figure this out? And we never agree. And so, okay, you pick three games, I'll pick three games, you pick three games, we're going to all give them a number, make a game out of that to find out what game we're going to play because <laughs> there's so many games, we don't know what to play. Mm. Yeah, uh, and, and, and that in itself is a problem, having too many games. When we were young, we had Monopoly, we had Trivial Pursuit, we had, oh, I had Masterpiece. Um, so oh, we, yeah. we had a limited selection and we would play a game every week. Oh, we yeah, played the we heck had, out of those games. Yeah, precisely. We to, and we, I mean, we, we played Risk till the cows came home and Axis and Allies till, I mean, that sat on the table for a week usually. Mm, exactly. I mean, as you said, you know, I, I said, my wife, what do you want to do tonight? Do you want to watch your film? She goes, should we play a board game? I goes, okay, then choose one. And then it's an argument between my daughter and my wife, what game to play. And I said, yeah, I'll play that. And then my daughter says, no, I don't want to play that. How oh, about this? And then my wife says, oh, I don't want to play that. And it's like, oh, God, just, just pick a game and we'll play it. it, it, it there's just there's too much choice. Yeah, it's a simple life. You know, it's uh, Ricky Skaggs wrote a, skunk, a song. The simple life is a life for me, a man and a wife and a family. The Lord up above knows I'm trying to live a simple life in difficult time. You know, what, where's the simplicity? You know, it's everything's gotten kind of busy and complicated, but we're talking about this whole deal, and I'm like, you know, the truth is, though, I really do enjoy these new games. I when they come out with the new game, I want it. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I Aquasphere came out and Tasty Minstrel did it, and I wanted it. Roll for the Galaxy, everyone was telling me, and I wanted it. Mm, yeah, it's, I think it was um, Joel Eddy put up on um, Twitter this week. He said, um, oh, "Have a look at this on Kickstarter. It's Defenders of the Wasteland. It's um, Richard Lanius, uh, Richard Lanius's new game." which is oh. based on Defenders of the Realm, which is based on Pandemic. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And I said to him, I said, uh, well, let's all sing along now because <laughs> we don't need another the Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Max Wasteland. Sorry, I just went out the window there. Yeah, but it's like, we don't need another pandemic. We don't need another game where it's like, oh, you move three pieces and then you turn over a card and it tells you what to do. Okay, and then this happens. I come wonder on, what on. people. I wonder what people actually feel about the amount of games that are coming out. It'd be great to, when we're going to show up a little bit of information at the end of the show here, where you can go to our guild and you can go to our Facebook page. You can also follow us at Twitter and different things. Uh, you can go to boardgametheater.com, and we actually have a Berkey and Badger page where you can have an audio uh, version of this podcast. And and we'd love to hear what you have to say about this. It'd be great to get your feedback because there's so it's a it's a deep topic, and uh, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer to it or not. You know, I think there's a lot of different perspective, and it depends on your your disposable income, depends on your time, it depends upon a lot of factors. Yeah, so uh, I was expecting the picture to come up there. It didn't come up. Yeah, so basically, do you would you agree with me um, that too many there are too many games and it's a bad thing for the hobby, or would you agree with Kevin that it there are too many bad there are too many games out there? But it is a good thing that there are too many games out there because it 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 spawns um, babies and other kind of stuff. <laughs> Well, you know, so in a perfect the world, there. 
Yeah, just take a look. We can leave that up for a little bit so you can see that the BoardGameTheater.com Berkey Badger page or the Facebook Berkey Badger or the Board Game Geek Guild at 2248. But I think it's in an ideal world, I, I think we probably would prefer to have fewer high quality games available. So if, if for and instance, a thousand, <laughs> yeah, shut the rubbish <laughs> ones and get all of the, the, the slag out of there. But, you know, if we had, you know, instead of a thousand games being developed, that we had 200 games that were just really fantastic games. Mm -hmm. And then we get to pick and choose the 20 of them that we are able to purchase every year based on our taste. But when and you've got a thousand, minions. yeah, well, that's the perfect world, but uh, that probably is not going to happen. So do your homework before you buy your games. Look at reviews, hear what people have to say, gauge what you get their taste, and see if it matches with yours, and that helps you prevent uh, some bad purchases. Yes, wise words there, Berkey. Oh, should we wind things up then? I think so. This has been a great time, Barry. It's been a lot of fun talking to you, and I will try to do this in another couple couple weeks or so. And uh, I think it's going to be great as we develop more people interacting with us uh, to see what they have to think about this, and we can incorporate some of your thoughts, you know, as listeners in the show. It'll add for extra dynamic, and we would really love to to have some interaction with you and get to know you too. So uh, thanks for listening and we'd sure appreciate it if you'd share our information too with Facebook and Twitter and things like that so that we can continue to have more community. Yeah, definitely. Um, and don't forget that there's the uh, special offer on the Stone Meyer Games uh, treasure chest. Yes. What we have to do is uh, put in the special code of Berkey and Badger. Nope. Just Bad Berkey Badger. Yeah, no and in the middle. Sorry, I, uh, I mucked up there. Um, also, if you've not got time to sit and watch the video, um, there is a uh, audio version of this show. Uh, Kevin, have you got any more details on where this audio version uh, is? The audio version will be on our Facebook page. It's Facebook slash Berkey Badger. Uh, Berkey and Badger for the Facebook. The website is uh boardgametheater.com and then there's the Berkey Badger page that has the audio podcast that'll probably be up by tomorrow as we download this and it gets processed and feel free to download it listen to it uh, and the video version as well we'd love to hear from you and love to have comments and get on jo uh, Jamie Stegmeyer's uh, Stonemeyer game site uh, I think you'll enjoy that treasure chest if you haven't seen that before it's really a great deal to get an extra 10 bucks Oh, music. That's not the end theme, Berkey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, with that, it's been a it's been a, glad to see you all. I'll let you finish her off there, Barry. Okay, yeah, and it's been a pleasure to talk to you, Kevin. And um until next time, um, thank you very much. And hopefully the music will kick in. There we go. And the times too. We're so glad we had this time together And now it's time to go It won't be long until we have another show So keep us in mind, get online Berkey and Badger will be back in no time